Okay, well, good afternoon everybody. If you can see me uh, over the top of my putter, and I'll shift this out the road and uh, give you a better view of me. And that's just uh, one of the little topics I want to get started with today. And of course, these are my own peppers, my own save seed, the striped pepper. Absolutely marvellous. And of course, today, what I'm going to start down here is the perk them up. Uh, sorry about the video of the weekend, and of course, as you know, the North East, we've had some really strong gales from, um, I think, from last Thursday onwards, when I, the first day I attempted to start making the, uh, the video, and the wind was so bad, I just knocked it off. Of course, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, been blowing a gale up here. And of course, today, um, the wind's eased off, but down comes the rain. And that's put paid in my second part of the video. Which of course is uh, getting sprouts, you know. What Roger did the weekend, he went right through the sprout bed and weeded them all out, nice and tidy. My job was to get the garlic spray made up, mix it up, a bit soapy water, and um, instead of spraying it, we like to wash them. And that's, uh, I'll show you in the next part of the video. But for the, uh, the first part, we spray, as I say, mainly for the peppers, but you can use it on most things. I've already made this spray up before, you, you know the. Um, you should know the, uh, the amounts that I use. Now, if I'm just using a litre spray, <coughs> I make it as such. A teaspoon of the baking soda, um, a teaspoon of Epsom salts, a couple of drops of uh, good olive oil, and don't forget the washing up really good, because what the washing up really good do, it just mashes everything up, binds it all together, and makes it a nice, worthwhile spray. And that is what I've done, brought from down, from upstairs. Um, <coughs> I've got the washing up good in there. I've got the, um, I've got the olive oil. Now the olive oil, um, what I need to do is leave the water a little bit warm. So when you pour that in, you'll see it floating on the top of the water. Add your, um, your baking soda, and then when you, when you finally add your, your washing up good, you'll see it all binds together. Absolutely fantastic. So that's the secret of that. And all I've got in here is just warm water. I've nearly brought it up to the level. So what I'm going to do now is uh, mix this in. Then give it all a, a really good shaking up. It should just bring it up nicely. Yep. Yeah. Oh, finally after all these years I'm starting to get now the, the, um, the amount spot on. So that's that done. I'll pop that lid back on there. So what I've done for here, I've added a little bit extra baking soda, with it being a two litre spray. A couple of extra drops of washing up liquid. And then a couple of drops of, um, of olive oil. And of course, what I haven't added, <laughs> nearly again, what I haven't added, which I always leave down here in the greenhouse, is of course the Epsom salts. And I like to just equivalent to a heaped teaspoon and that's that in there lovely job you right okay so we've got all our ingredients now the Epsom salt is going to feed as well as the other ingredients in the water killing your white fly. I've left a little bit of room in the top of the spray so I can shuffle it around and that's a first class spray and there we go. I'll give all my peppers, my chilies, everything a really good soak with that. Um, if you've got white fly on your peppers or your chilies, which you're bound to have at some time throughout the season because um, they love peppers as much as what we do. So just make sure you give them a really good spray with this and it'll clear all your white fly off as well as feed your peppers. As I say, the magnesium is one of the main things um, for giving your peppers and your chilies uh, a really good build up on the fruits. That's what they need. They're going to keep them nice and, going to keep them nice and clean and also, as I say, it's going to feed them. Now I'll move them over these plants. As I say, they've, uh, the chilies and the peppers they've grown really well from since I stopped them 
and uh, that's the height now. I'm not growing any higher than that. That's the height I like in here in this greenhouse because I've got the shelves up, um, and already I've got uh, I've got the flowers there, and I've got some small fruits just coming on the bottom. So I'm uh, I'm well pleased with that. Feeding wise, um, a good potash feed will do for these. Um, as I say, I've got my own mix in the pot, so these haven't had any additional feeding. Um, but now, now that the flowers have set and the fruits are on, I'll start and up the feed and I'll give them a little bit of extra, either seaweed, um, seaweed fertiliser, you can use uh, tomato feed if you want, it's got a high potash rate, just as good. Um, but uh, to me, as well as giving them that, they'll get a good, um, they'll get a good dose of Epsom salts at least once a week, and that'll give them all the magnesium that they need. I'll just give that there. Get that top a good spraying, and as I say, as well as killing the white fly, it's going to give me, give, going to give me a good feeding. So that's a good start. Anyway, so what I'll do is, um, I'll crack on here. I'll get these finished off, give them a good, give them all a good spraying, and then we'll get ourselves up the plot, and hopefully I'll get them, um, I'll get started on this next spray. What I have got down here, of course, um, is a chamomile tea. I'll be taking that up with us, uh, just a packet of chamomile tea in a litre of water, boiling water, just let that go down. I'll also put a little bit of soap with that and that'll help it stick to the seedlings is what I'll be using that for because I've got the, uh, I've got the spring bedding to start sowing. Um, I've got some lettuce to sow and I've got the winter cabbage, some extra winter cabbage to put in so we'll do all that once we get up the plot. But for the time being, let's hope this wind stays away. The rain's not too heavy. If it stops raining, what I'll do is I'll make a garlic spray up there. Give it a good mashing up, make sure it's nice and clean. Yeah, and I like to mix it up in a couple of buckets. Add the soapy water. Get it in the watering can and just put a fine rose in the watering can. And I like to give me sprouts and cabbages, which are really um, picking up at the moment. Nice and strong. I like to get them a good drink, a good wash over of, um, of garlic wash. And that'll keep them there. Uh, I've got nets on them at the moment, but uh, the butterflies are going to be out and fall over the next few days once the, uh, once the weather warms up. So this is the time for them to start laying eggs. So I want to make sure I've got to give them a good coating of that, and I'll also finish off the last of the jack onions, uh, get them out, get them hung, and then I'll make room for them, uh, them winter cabbages to go in. So there's loads to do in this video. So let's uh, let's crack on anyway. I've got this first first of the sprays ready. I've done me, I'll get me peppers and chilies done down here and we'll get up the plot we'll get them sprayed up there and then we'll uh, I'll make up that garlic wash okay and we'll get a few seeds somewhere I'm up there right so I'll see you up on the plot okay bye for now okay right well I hope it's not too hot and you have to start steaming the camera up as you can see in the far uh, this is one of the new sheds that we just built this summer but uh, we've not got around to finishing them off yet but at least we've got there. Um, we've got some of the amenities. That's a bonus. We've got the, the fire in, the heater in. And we've got most of our tools, cabinets. It's just the far end of the, the shed still to finish. So we can hang all of our, our garden implements and uh, bits and pieces in the far end. But uh, on the night like this, it's starting to rain a bit heavy there now. So I thought best get inside. Okay, so what I've got in here, I had two pints of water. And I threw in about four or five old cloves. These are the old cloves of last year. But they're still good. The some that hadn't divided or split, just little solid balls. That usually occurs with your garlic when they don't get frosted enough, they don't get enough cold, and they're not segregating, they're not split. You end up with just a solid ball. But I never throw them out, I keep them. And they've been sitting here since, uh, since the end of last year. And uh, what I'm doing is I'm just crushing them up and put them into the boiling water. So as I say, I started off with two pints here. And I don't about a pint in now, so I'm just about right. And it's on a rolling boil. It's been going now for about a quarter an hour. That's fine for me. I could actually smell it at the bottom of the garden. And of course, if you're doing this at home, like some of you lucky fellas get away with doing I don't. I can't do it now. I've done it once at home. And I got a right bollock and my wife didn't speak to us for about a week after that. I had the whole flat absolutely stinking with garlic. So I've, uh, lessons learned. I've been doing it in the garage. I've got it uh, in the garage at home. 
um, I've got a small uh, small electric heater but it doesn't do as good a job as what the gas one does with the gas one you can get the heat up just nice the way you want it with the electric one it keeps switching itself off when it gets a certain temperature that's no good to me, I like it boiling first, turn it down to a rolling boil and keep it going for about a good 20 minutes and you actually smell it now it's absolutely fantastic now, all I've got is a, an old day uh, brick splitter that I use, I'm going to turn this off all together before I do anything else, turn the gas off always think of safety first when you're in the garden right, so there we are, I've got one of my pans that I use a lot of and uh, just an old plant pot and on the plant pot a piece of muslin a piece of muslin cloth and I just sit that and what I've got in the bottom of there there's another pint of water I'm just going to sit that in there and then I'm going to pour that's absolutely lovely that it absolutely stinks but if you get yourself a little bit of stick or something or an old trowel or anything and just really mash that garlic up into the, into the boiling water and you'll get all that flavour and all that strong juice to make your, make your liquid up that's absolutely marvellous. It absolutely stinks. Woo! I'm going to go home smelling like a, like a bit of pizza. Fantastic, that's that done. Let that drain well off. And as I say, the muslin with the garlic in, whatever's left of it. As I say, the plant pot always comes in handy. It's just to hold it for the time being. We'll put that to one side. And then we'll just let that do its thing. It's just boiling water, so watch your hands, by the way. I hope this camera's not steaming up. That's fantastic. So I've got two pints in there now. I'm going to put this back in a pan for the time being. <coughs> what you can do, if you're not using it straight away, I'll not use this straight away. You can leave your garlic actually in the water because it's all going to cool down. Just leave it wrapped in the muslin, just leave it in your water. If you're not going to use it straight away, as I say, it's starting to rain pretty heavy outside, so it's just going to be a waste of time me doing it now, because the rain's just going to wash it off. So I can get my hands right into there now, because it's been dipped into the cool water there. That's great, that. But I'll leave it in there for the night. All I'll do is I'll just stick that in the handle, for me washing up liquid. really good drops because this is going into a watering can. So stay that in so it's a nice soapy liquid and then a bit more fresh water. Top it up for about five pints. That's marvellous that. That's half a half a kit there. Just take it out of the way for the minute. There's a really nice, oh, well, we're spilling half it on the floor. It's really lovely and it is strong as anything. But there, uh, that's fine. All I'll do with that, I've got another pan handy. Dip into there. Dip into there. If you think it's a bit strong, you can always add a little bit more water. Don't be afraid to add the water. So there's plenty of soap there, so it's going to really stick to them cabbages. That's great, that. that's first class. In fact, I will I'll just add a little bit of more water to that. And that's me mixing it up. So what I'll do with that now, that's cool enough now to go straight into a watering can, and then I can go along the roads and the cabbages are sprouts and just give them a good soak with that. And of course that'll protect them from the uh, the onslaught of the white butterflies. You can add a little bit um Epsom salt for that. Couple of, couple of teaspoons there, couple of tablespoons or teaspoonfuls of uh, Epsom salt for that. And that'll feed your cabbages as well as uh, as I say, keep the white fly, keep the white fly, keep the, the butterflies away. Uh, as I say, 
if you do have any infestations of um, of cat plus, they'll certainly not want to munch on them when it's been coated with us. So it should keep them nice and clean. But uh, that's going to be my first job tomorrow morning. If this rain stops, I'll let us cool down now. I'll do the same again tomorrow morning. I'll tip it into a couple of buckets so it's well mixed. You can just sit there all, all night. And then first thing in the morning, I'll put it in a watering can. And I'll go along the rows of the cabbages and the sprouts and give them a good soak with that. So that's them out of the way. That's another job finished with. So that's great. Right. Okay, I think we'll finish off in the top greenhouse tonight. And uh, we're um, just about ready to start sowing some of the, um, the spring bed. Okay. Okay, well, good afternoon, everybody. Once again, we're back up here. Uh, hopefully, it's going to be a better day than what it was yesterday. And of course, if you remember, I finished up the video yesterday by making up the garlic. It's been sitting in the hut all, all night. It's nice and cool now. And uh, I took a bag out, strained it off, put a little bit of soapy water in, so it's nice and soapy. And uh, as you can see behind me, the sprouts. Absolutely fantastic. Lovely plants. Right, you went right through the earth here and we did them all out so they're all nice and clean. There's no sign of any pests on there. Uh, just to be on the safe side, there's our secret weapon. And all you need to do for the garlic wash is just a fine rose on the watering can. Make sure you've got that all important soap in. Of course, the soap will have the uh, will have the liquid stick to the plants, the garlic. Of course, you can smell it already. Although it's been standing overnight, you can, uh, you can really smell the pump. I'm going to go right on this bed. Five pints in there. Tell you soap in this so they're, they're well covered. Nothing to do. Make sure I put the net back down. And of course that keeps the keeps the pigeons up. That's it, so that's them sorted. Well pleased with that. That job done out of the way. One thing I will be doing this weekend. Get over there. Definitely need to do it. Just to get these Jap, Jap onions up. Once again. Absolute first class crop. They're just starting to bend over there. And quite a bit of rain over the last few days. Of course, that's what you always get one or two that goes to seed. There, on the whole. It's been absolutely first class. Absolutely marvellous. So, I'll let them dry out overnight. What I need to do is start skinning them straight away. Just take some of the, the worst of the skins off. And then they'll hang up in the shed and they'll make a fantastic game vegetable to go with what meals over the next couple of months. Well before the um, before the onions are ready. The, the main crop's not ready until August. But your japs, you can count on your japs always get a first class crop in June. So we're now at the beginning of July so it's time to come up and of course it's going to create a couple of, couple of rows where I can get a few rows of winter cabbage in which I've grown away in the greenhouse. Where I did manage to put a few daily as I had spare left down here so I filled this gap up. I'll get the last of the japs out. The carrots are fine now, they're growing up, they're nice and strong. As I say, we always like to put the carrots in between the jap onions, and that just keeps that the carrot fly away from them just for a few weeks. They're nice and strong now, so hopefully they should be okay, they're growing away well there. But uh, we'll get ourselves inside, and what I want to do tonight, I'm going to finish spraying these um, these peppers. I bought the spray up from down home that I made, and then we'll get ourselves in the top. Wonderful greenhouse, and I'll get started sowing these spring bedding. Okay.
Okay, right, well, here we are. It's a damn safe warmer in here where it is outside. It's not cold outside, it's just a little bit on the cool side. But uh, if you can uh, see what what cones are nearly at the top here now. And I've got the, the beans. I've got the beans down the side of the cone, so they're, they're growing away really well. Uh, just a quick um, quick blast of the grapevine. That's, uh, I still haven't finished them few bunches yet. I'll have to get cotton with scissors and uh, plot on with that. Now, what I want to spin around here to do to show you is the, uh, is the croissants. They're growing away really well. The, the chilies on the back end are fantastic. I'm going to spray them tonight and give them a, a blast of the, the spray that I made up. But they're, they're growing well, really well. As you can see, they're not even touching the polythene. That's because we have stopped them. You can see the, the centre break just farther down. And the side shoots have come out from the centre break where I stopped them. And they'll not get any taller than that. And that's just nice for me. Two and a half to three foot is perfect. By the time you put them in the box. And I've got three foot headroom from the bench to the top of the tunnel. So that's, they're perfect. Same as the ones down home. Just a nice size. But these croissants here have been a, a little bit of a... Uh, a bind this last couple of weeks. Uh, I've noticed a few um, pests on them, leaf miner. Uh, some we did pick up on some um, white fly yesterday. That's because we had lettuces uh, planted alongside the um, the chrysanthemum. Well, of course, lettuces are always uh, they always attract the white fly. So we've taken the last of the lettuce out. They were nice, the, um, the young lettuce, and of course we're left with just the chrysanthemum in the box. There's a bit um, leaf miner on the bottom of the leaves and some of them. Um, so what I'm going to do on the tops, I'm going to get these a spray with the spray that I've already made up. And on the bottoms, I'm going to make a rhubarb juice up. Uh, boil some rhubarb down for the next video. I'll show you all that in the next video. And I'm going to get the bottoms a spray with that. And hopefully that will cure the leaf miner. I don't like spraying uh, fruits or anything like that with the, with the rhubarb. It is a poison, so you just got to be careful with it. Um, but I don't mind spraying the croissants because we'll not be eating, we'll not be eating the croissants. So that's, um, that's one thing I don't mind spraying with. I'm just going to turn the camera around here and give you a... Hopefully I can get a, a nice clear shot of that, um, that pepper on the top here. What I've had to do, I've had to bring a... I've had to bring a few of the peppers out of the, um, out of the melon house. What we had down on the benches. I've cleared all the back bench. And I've just left the peppers at the front because uh, they're getting the most light. All the peppers that want the back end, I've brought them all through, and they're up on the top here. Peppers and chilies, of course, absolutely first class. Strong, really lovely little plants. These are once again are the block peppers. Oh, as I say, we have stopped them in the middle. That's broke weight of about five new shoots here now, and there's little flowers and little peppers just starting to appear. So if you've got your peppers, now the time to start feeding them. If the, if the flowers are dropped, or you have your fruits are starting to set. Now is the time to start feeding them. And of course, with the spray I brought up, it's not only going to kill a white fly, I'll give them a little blast while I'm here. It's not only going to kill a white fly, but the uh, Epsom salt, it's going to give your peppers the magnesium. And that's, that's critical for them for fattening them out and give them, um, give them all the, uh, the goodness that they need. And of course, they can see it with the, uh, the Epsom salt. And the baking soda is going to get rid of that white fly because the white fly love the peppers as much as what we do. So what I like to do, I like to give them a good spray with this, and then from now on, once a week, just ordinary Epsom salts. If you've just got a litre, a one litre jug, you'll only want a teaspoonful. If you've got a big one, a two litre one like I had down home, you need a heap, tea, a heap teaspoonful in there, and that'll give you all the protection you need. That's for the Epsom salts once again, yeah. Level teaspoon in a litre of warm water, just add a little bit of soap with it, not too much, just a little bit, and that just helps everything mix together. And then you can spray your, your peppers once a week. It's not going to do them any harm. It's going to give it's going to file off feed them, it's going to give them all the all the goodness that they need. Now these these chilies here are absolutely marvellous. I stopped these at exactly the same time and I've lost count of the amount of shoots on there. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's at least a dozen shoots on there. It's an absolutely marvellous plant, fantastic. And these are the little yellow scotch bonnets. Now these are a little bit farther behind than what the, the big bell peppers are. But no doubt we'll get a first class crop of these. Main thing tonight, 
and it really is nice to see healthy looking plants like that. If you've gotten to this stage and then you just got to have to make sure you look after them well because once you get to this stage you grow them well, you've spent a lot of time on them now is the time to feed them. As I say, your flowers are on, your fruits are on, you can start feeding with a potash, uh, a light potash, seaweed, one of the best stuff you can use, or you can just use a basic tongue right and just feed them with that once a week. We we like to switch in between, we like to use a little bit of net, uh, nettle juice, we like to use uh, horse manure that's in water, and then we can add a little bit of seaweed to it, or we can just spread a little bit of seaweed around the pots. These have, have had no extra feeding whatsoever since we potted them up because what we did we put them in our own compost when you just use multi-purpose compost you can guarantee that they'll use the feeds up and that in about uh, three to four weeks once the plants start growing our plants potted off in the compost that we make now we know my compost I've shown you a lot of times how I make it up and there they are they're as healthy as a butcher's dog them yeah? growing well really well and uh, of course They'll not want nothing else until them flowers come on, but uh, don't forget the old spray, and as I say, there's a bit of salt in there, so it's going to, going to give them a bit of goodness, it's not going to harm them, even though there's nothing on them yet. And they can sit on the top here. Full light, well pleased with that. That's the peppers out the way, the chilies out the way. The flies are bugger enough now, because I've got the... <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm merciless when I've got a spray in my hand. I just like to do everything, especially with this mixture. And it really, uh, it really keeps the plants nice and healthy. So the croissants will get a good blast of that. The chilies are done, peppers are done. I'm gonna crack on up there with a crack on up the top now with a few uh, bent plants for the for the spring. Okay. Okay. Well, here we are up the top of the hundred volt greenhouse. I love working up here. I can have the double doors wide open, plenty of fresh air. <coughs> of course, the place is full of cucumbers at the moment. Tomato plants. These tomato plants are the ones I took from the from the little side shoots to the little suckers. There's uh, two, three, five. The five suckers that I took, and a fantastic little plant, growing away really strong. So it just goes to show you, you know, a couple of suckers, side shoots, root them off, and you got a perfect plant. But um, today is all about getting me spring bedding soon. I'm going to spend the next couple of days with focus for heavy rains again tonight so I'll probably not get nothing done in the garden tomorrow. I'll get the last time jack onions out and I'm quite happy with that but what I want, what I, what I want to concentrate on is getting these spring bedding soon. I've made a space in the melon house now by lifting them peppers off the back. I've got some trees lined away along the back and I'll fill all these seeds what I want sown and they'll sit on the back of the melon house. Doors will be open, plenty of fresh air and just let them grow away nice and slowly. I'm going to start off with them. Um, there was three, three, or four, three or four different methods of sowing these. Um, as I always say, pick the size of seed tree that you want. All dependent on your seed count. Majority packets now, if you get a good, um, if you get a good seed merchant, like say King Seed, I use King Seed quite a lot. DT Browns, Suttons. Um, Premier, <coughs> good seed company, and you'll find on the back of the packet you've got your seed count. So your seed count will determine what size tree you're using. Some trees you might only get 30, 40 seed in. Well, a little quarter tree, absolutely spot on for that. Um, I like to sow my lettuce in, in little trees like that. And I can move up to a bigger tree. Um, the pansies I'll be sowing this afternoon, and the pansies, once again, there's 75 seed in a pack of pansies, so they'll fit perfectly in that. Then the wallflowers, well, <laughs> Primula, um, 275 seed. So the Primula will go first class in a full size seed tree. And once again, it's multi purpose compost, just multi purpose compost, and there are plenty of drip chops and mixed in with it. I know there's great mixed in with your multi-purpose compost, but I always like to add an extra bucket or two to the mix that I make up, and it makes it really free draining. Now I soak these about 
10 minutes ago and already it's drained right through and I can, and I can hold them up. Absolutely fantastic and that's what they should be. So they should be half an inch below your seed level, below your, your seed tray. Quality compost, once again, fresh water. Um, I'll tell you a little bit more about that when I put the topping on the primulas. Um, because primulas don't like to be prohibited from light. Um, so what I like to do with the primulas, I like to broadcast them on the tree first, and then cover them with a little bit of perlite, and that'll just anchor them to the seed. If your soil is nice and moist to start with, you shouldn't have any problems. So we'll get these primulas in first, and then I can get this big tree out of the way. I'll keep that packet handy because what I want to do is to put a, a label in there, so we'll know exactly what's what. So with the primulas, polyanthus, exactly the same. I've got a couple of packets of each. They're an absolute marvellous plant for the uh, best we have spring baskets in here. There's a seed, they're very tiny these, so you've just got to be very careful with them. In fact, what I might do with these, I might save the big tree. I might save the big tree for the wallflower, because I know there's a thousand in there, and I'll sow the, the primula in this one here. Because judging by them in there, it says 275 on the count. But I'm just going to use this little tree here. I'm going to gently just tap them packets, just broadcasting them in the tray. That's great, that. I should have really had my glasses on for this job, but okay, that's the first one done. Nice, handy little packets, keeps the seed nice and clean. Now that's a primula. As I say, they don't like being prohibited from light, so what I like to do with these. Just use a little bit of perlite and just help the seed the perlite must stop any light from getting through the seed there we are all that'll do I'll just anchor, anchor that seed down now with this stuff it's fantastic for Two reasons, as I say, it's a great for mixing with your compost, for giving you aeration in it. But what I like to do when I'm anchoring seeds down like primulas or polyanthus, and just spread a little bit on the top, but it's a great indicator of how fresh your water is. Well, I keep ranting on about it all the time. Always use fresh water, fresh out the top, especially for seedlings. If you use water out your barrels, even though it's a day, two, three days, you might think it's still fresh, it's not. There's pathogens. There's mould, diseases can you know, easily build up, especially when you get a red hot day and you'd be really surprised. So if you're going to use a water that's a couple of days old, the first signs your perlite will start to turn green. Believe you me. And that will tell you that's a good indicator that the water hasn't been clean and that has pathogens and there's moulds in that water because your, your, uh, your perlite will start to go green from underneath. Where the perlite touches the soil and it's getting the moisture, you'll see it going green. Believe you me. So if it stays nice and clean, nice and white, and then you're okay. Once again, what I'll be doing is sitting these on trays. I'll not be walking from over overhead. I've got large trays down the melon house here. I'll probably show you the next week when they're all planted out. And newspaper on the bottom, and these will just be sitting on the newspaper. And all we have to do is just to go along, water the newspaper the watering can, nice fresh water every, every time and let these just soak up the own water and they'll grow away nice and strong so I'll, uh, I'll keep you posted on them how they're growing throughout the week or throughout the next couple of weeks I should say hopefully within a week, couple of weeks they should be through and we'll be pricking them off so that's the, that's the polyanthus out of the way with a wallflower I'll use a full size tray what I like to do here is get a bit of old cane, a bit of bamboo Maybe a little bit too long that. Should have been another piece of own somewhere. Just not that enough. And that's perfect. So what I like to do here is just to get a 
and all a bit of bamboo and all cane and just press into the wet compost. And what that does, it's giving you a clear line, clear mortar, just like a furrow in the farmer's fields. Press it well in. And there we have it. I've got three furrows here in the wet compost. And then all we have to do Again, more flour, 500 seed, top of the packet. So you just got to search around. If it's not in the front, it'll be on the back, and it'll tell you exactly. Now, these are the dwarf ones, uh, the dwarf wall flowers. These are great for pots and baskets outside your door or on the patio. So I'll, I'll make sure I have to keep these because I don't want them getting mixed up with the large wall flowers that I hate to grow. So we've got 500 seed. And they're easy, very easy to see, because they're a nice light colour. And all I like to do is just go along the line. And I've made three lines. Just tap in the pocket. So when these go through, I'll not be pricking them off singly. So exactly the same with me, the Belia, the Petunias, and all that. I hate just putting them off singly. I like a nice little bunch. So when they grow, you've got a really first class little plant. That's better now. That's coming out really easy there now. That's great. So 500 seed in there. No hurt. Three perfect lanes. Right. So different again to these because what we'll do now is we'll mix a little bit of perlite with some muddy peppers compost. Don't have to worry about covering these because they'll be through within a within a couple of days. Once again, the compost nice and moist. There we have it. A little bit of perlite in. Double them off. And get them markers put straight in them. There we have it. One tree. One tray of dwarf wall floors. Fantastic. Straight in. Easy as that. We'll put that at one side. And then we'll crack on once again. Quarter trays. Really easy. I bought these, I can't remember how many years ago now, uh, from Wilco's. Years ago. I think they were coppers. And I've had them for about 10 years. I think I bought two or three dozen of them. And absolutely marvellous, just little quarter trays. When you pick a packet of expensive seed up, and you, you'll find you, especially geraniums and stuff like that, at the beginning of the year, and you've only got 10 or 15 seed in, these are spot on for using. Great little trays. But there, uh, once again, pansy. There's only 75 seed in these, so that'll fit great into one of them trays. I've got two or three different kinds of pansy to sow. So I like to get cracking on these. But there, uh, I like to have them in early. I can make a later sown, around about um, August, September time, when I put the sweet peas in. And with them plants, I'll overwinter them in a the polytunnel. These will be ready to plant out at the end of this year, hopefully. Uh, once again, the pansy, they're a nice light colour. So they're easy enough to see. You can just tap your finger along. And they are well spaced out. 75 seed. Fantastic. Straight in there. They're on a nice wet compost. Once again with a pansy. Don't have to worry about the light. So just a light covering. 
multi-purpose compost and perlite. And there we have it. Easy as that. So that's my pansy, my wallflower, and my primula. Good start. I've got about another 20 packets to sew. <laughs> so I'm going to crack on. There's a large wallflower. Primrose. Primrose and another one. Primrose and primula. Exactly the same. Don't prohibit them from light. Just multi sow them, broadcast them on top of your compost, and just use a little bit of perlite, scatter it over them, just to help the seed anchor down to the damp dampness. Put them on a tray and up on your shelf, top shelf, plenty of sunlight, full light, and they'll grow away nice and strong. They're a nice pansy, large pansy, crystal, clear crystal. Uh, Bellis, Bellis daisy, I grow every year. And with the bellus, I'll grow exactly the same as what I did with the wallflower in three rows because with the bellus again you get thousands in a packet so I like to put them in tiny little clumps of twos and threes in a, uh, a multi-seeded a multi -seeded tray but I'll show you all that later on throughout the year but there's absolutely loads to be done I've got about six packets of pansy to put in and I've got a, uh, a big packet of cabbage to put in I'll have to get them in the night yeah. They're a nice late winter one. I've also got the um, Sweet William to sow, that's another one. And I've got some late Dianthus, Campania, Foxglove. The uh, list goes on and on. But, um, no doubt we'll spend the next few days uh, getting all these sown. And then what we'll do, I'll, if I'll get all finished by next weekend, I'll take you out to the mountain house and I'll, uh, I'll show you how we we'll spread them out onto the trees. Just a full newspaper underneath them, on the trees. You can pour as much water as you want on them. The newspaper just acts like a big piece of blotting paper. And what it does, the tray, the tray sitting on top can just soak up what water they need. It just means you don't have to water up above or on top of them. Especially if you are using dirty water. Um, you may think it's clean after a couple of days, but it's not. Believe you me. You water on the top, and the first thing you're going to do, you're going to spread all them pathogens, all them molds, all the funguses on top of that. Next fresh compost, and it's just going to romp away. And within a few weeks, you'll see it turn green. And a, a green slime on top of there is no good for emerging seedlings. It'll just, if it'll not kill them, it'll really slow them down. But that's just a few tips for you, just to, uh, just to help you get by. As I say, I never water anything from above. I always say uh, water from down below, and then that way I keep them nice and clean. But once again, make sure your water's nice and fresh before you you soak in your compost. And then one thing I didn't do which is here. I've missed out on the first trace, but I normally give everything a good soaking with chamomile tea. Now I'll have to wait for them coming through now. But what I like to do is I like to put the seed down, give them a good soak with chamomile, and then cover them over. That's one thing I did forget. I'm always forgetting something. But uh, no doubt, once the seedlings come through, I'll be going all my spray and giving them all a good soaking. There's nothing to stop me now going along there now with the ones I've sown. It's nice fresh, I know it's nice fresh peeing water in there because I get it straight from the tap and I put it in my spray. Get that, get that compost a good soaking. So, as well as it being nice fresh compost, it's had a soak of chamomile tea, so that's a double um, health and goodness for it, as I say. Keep the seeds, look after the seeds, keep them nice and clean, and you shouldn't have any problems with them growing. Right, so I think yeah, that's just all this for this video. I've, uh, I think I've talked on a little bit too long, but um, I hope I've given you a bit help here. Yeah. Yeah, some of the seedlings, spring, spring seedlings, get them in now, and you know, nice first class plants ready for planting out in October, November time in your baskets. Yeah, winter baskets and that, and yeah, get them all placed out. But I'll show you how they grow over the next few weeks. Once again, thanks for all the new subscribers. But quite a few coming online. Loads of comments again. Uh, I'm pleased to get uh, a lot of people commenting. Help as much as I can. Uh, as I say, if you can't wait for the, the videos, as I say, I, I struggled all last week to get uh, to get this video started. It was absolutely horrendous, the wind and the rain. Uh, so I passed all last week, um, from last Thursday, I think, until this Monday and Tuesday, before the wind actually in the start to pick up again, believe it or not. So focus for heavy wind and rain tonight, so I've managed to get to squeeze this video in. But um, 
as I see, I've managed to come off most of the stuff. The tomatoes, everything's going away great. So I'll, uh, what I'll do is I'll give you a look on the polytunnels. Uh, probably in the next video, we'll crack off with a rhubarb spray first off. Uh, there's a lot of people having trouble with bugs and that at the moment, but try and keep your plants as clean as you can. Just a couple of common sprays, the garlic spray, as I say, the uh, baking powder spray, and I'm going to do the rhubarb spray next week. Um, if you have got heavy pests, I'll show you how to make the rhubarb, and you can get them a spray with that, and that should keep them nice and clear. But uh, that's for for next week. But as I say, if you can't wait for the videos, you can uh, get on my Facebook page, it's uh, Jeff Foreman on the Plot. Uh, send me a friend's request and we'll, uh, we'll get you signed up. I try to get on there most nights. This last couple of weeks has been a bit difficult with um, one thing or another. We've been, uh, we've been a bit busy at home. Um, and as I say, we're still in the lockdown, or the wife's still in the lockdown. So, you know, we've just got to take our time. But apart from that, hopefully in the next few weeks, we should start and get back to some normality. Or I hope we will anyway. But um, until then, or until next week, hopefully the weather's fine and we'll get cracking on the rhubarb and we'll, uh, I'll give you a look around the pot next week. Okay, so thanks for watching and I'll catch you all again soon.